Today, we work on some more word problems, get introduced to some more formulas. And these formulas are a little more complicated looking. Here's the first one. And this is on page 431. And once again, if you got a question that's going to use this formula, and this formula figures out how much money you would have if you decided to put a regular amount away every month. If you want to save up to go on a trip, so you're going to start putting $200 away every month, and then you, you get a certain interest rate, and you're wondering, when will I have $5,000 so that I can go on this trip? You can figure those kind of things out with this formula. Once again, the formula, if you're given it on a test, I will give you the formula and explain what each of the things stand for. So here, FV stands for the future value of the investment. R is how, how much you're putting away every month or how much each of your investments are. I is the interest rate per compounding period. So if we use some of the letters we had before, we use R for a rate before and N for the number of compounding periods. And they're saying in this formula, that's what I is. You take your interest rate and divide it by how many compound periods you have. And N is the number of investments. So if we go to example one here, I'm going to rewrite out the formula for you guys. Future value is going to equal R1 plus I to the N minus 1 over I. And again, what you need to do is read the question. If you know what each of the things stand for, can you plug them in in the right spot? So here, it's determined how many monthly investments of $200. So in plugging things in, we know that we're plugging in $200 a month. Would have to be made into an account that pays 6% interest compounded monthly. So the I part will be 0.06 divided by 12, 0 0.06 divided by 12, and we want it, the future value to be $100,000. Now what makes today's questions a little bit more involved is that, again, you're solving for n in the exponent, and one of the strategies we've done, and we will definitely do it for these ones, is to try to first get your power by itself. And right now, that power has a bunch of other numbers on that side. So I put a green box around it so we can tell ourselves, OK, I want to get that by itself. How do I do order of operations if I want to solve for that green box? Well, first of all, I could get rid of the 0 0.06 over 12 that's on the bottom if I did the opposite of dividing, which is multiplying Go to my calculator. Go to my calculator and 100,000 times by 0 0.06 over 12 is 500. So now I have 500 equals 200. 1 plus 0 0.06 times 12, n minus 1. Again, I might keep writing that in a green box to tell myself, OK, I still have more work to do. Now I have to decide, if I want to get that by itself, there's a minus 1 and a 200. Order of operations, which one should I deal with first? Should I divide both sides by 200, or should I add 1 to both sides first? You have to look at the equation and think about your order of operations, what needs to be undone first. In this case, since there's the brackets, you should divide both sides by 200 to move the 200 or get rid of the 200 on the left-hand side. If I divide by 200 and simplify, 500 divided by 200 is 5 over 2. And at this point, can you see that I don't need the big square brackets anymore? And finally, now it'd be really easy to get this by itself if I add one to both sides. Oh, 
and I successfully get the power by itself. So we used a lot of our skills from previous grades to rearrange the equation to finally get the power by itself. And then we asked ourselves, how do I solve for exponents? I use logarithms. I can take the log of both sides. That would allow me to bring that exponent out in front. And now I can get n by itself. by dividing uh, 251.17. So you should try typing this into your calculator yourself to make sure that you know how to use your calculator. And interestingly, though, we have to be careful with these word problems. Because this question was asking, how many payments until you get to 100,000? The answer exactly is 251.17, but you're not making 0.17 of a payment. You're making full payments. You're doing $200 a month. So it would take $252 payments. 251 wouldn't be enough. If you needed $100,000, you would not have $100,000 at 251. You would have to wait until your next one at 252. Then you would be over $100,000. Okay? This is roughly, if you divide that by 12, about... Twenty-one years. So if you had a like, oh, there's a nice sports car that I want to buy, and it costs a hundred thousand dollars, you're like, I can afford to put two hundred dollars a month away. You are not going to get that sports car very quick. I'm sorry to tell you, it's going to take you twenty-one years before you save up a hundred thousand dollars and have that sports car. So it's a little bit slow something to be in to consideration. And that's why what happens in real life is when you want to buy a more expensive item, you usually don't have enough money and you have to get a loan. You have to get either the car company or a bank to give you money you don't have and you have to promise, oh, I'll pay you back, I'll pay you back, trust me, okay? And they say, well, we'll trust you, but just to make sure, we're also going to charge you some interest, and so you're going to pay a little bit extra as well. And that's what we're going to look at in the next formula and the next question. But first, I'll get you to circle 3 and 6.